Christian here, Barking Dog Studio, Barking Dog's Miniature Painting. Um, gonna make another video. Still working on this guy. We're gonna do some pan use some panel liner to kind of darken in the grooves there. I did some work off camera. We'll go over that. And my allergies just decided to kick me in the eyeballs apparently. Um, in another video, I'm gonna come back and we're gonna kind of revisit this guy that I'd worked on earlier and work on that cloud some. I think I'm going to darken some of the outer edges just try to get, give it a little more depth. Uh, we'll see if any of the others need touched up. So that's what we're going to be spending the next few videos working on are these guys. There's an air conditioner running in the background. If the background noise is too much just I guess sound off in the comments and let me know and worst case scenario I just start recording really late at night when I can turn it off because going into summer it's going to be running pretty much all the time. Uh, the back part of my house isn't tied into the central air so I have to rely on a window unit not too far from where the camera is at and where I'm sitting. Um, I had a lot of fun trying to upload the last video. I guess with everything going on I don't know if the internet's metered or if YouTube was just um, I could only la load up the standard definition. It wouldn't let me load up the high definition. Um, picture ended up looking okay. But it was kind of interesting because uh, it took me a while to actually get it uploaded. Uh, I had to, it took several tries. And I even changed the format, which shouldn't have mattered for YouTube. I changed it from, like, what was it, MP4 to a movie file. And then it uploaded. I don't know. I tried uploading at different times. I tried uploading originally during the daytime and it wasn't liking that at all. And I tried it late at night a couple of different times before it finally got uploaded to you guys. So it'll be interesting to see how this one plays out. Well, I hope you're all doing safe in quarantine land. So, let's get right to the miniature. So the panel liner I have is this stuff from Tamiya. I'm not sure what it is. I don't think it's enamel. There's actually a warning on here that says, do not apply onto enamel paint. Shake well or stir with paint stir before using. You can use enamel thinner with it. So maybe, I don't know, maybe it is enamel. And that's probably why it's warning you not to use it on enamel because it'll reactivate the enamel. Now that I think about it, it's probably why it says that. So I was thinking it was enamel based. Um, Either way, I'm not putting it on top of uh, enamel. This is acrylic, but then I actually clear coated it with an acrylic clear coat. Which if it was enamel, I, still I would have applied a, an acrylic clear coat and then put this stuff on there. Because it won't reactivate the acrylic. And some of the work I did off camera is I started bringing these teeth in. Because they're not going to be gray like the rest of the whip and I painted the base black just because I think it makes the rest of the miniature pop a little more and I came back here and tried fixing up an area where um, the wash had kind of beat it on me and I didn't catch it until I was actually watching the last video that I made so this to me a panel liner is a lot of fun to play with just kind of drop it in there like that and let it do its thing a steady hand uh, it cleans up easy enough with some mineral spirits or I was awfully heavy handed with that just now so I'm going to bust that with some handy dandy q-tips Later when we come back and do some cleanup, that's kind of what we'll do too. Do it with some enamel thinner. I don't know if the camera's picking it up or not, but my kid's having trouble with the 
VR. I'm always back there trying to. Help him straighten it out. See, yeah, his next several videos will probably have a lot of background noise between the air conditioner and the family. Hope you folks don't mind. And some of these are really, really small. that one not only is it when I say small it's some of the runes are really really small like I got another one up here and I'm fixing to do and then some of them are kind of shallow too and that's because at the time I was setting it I wasn't planning on using the enamel to come in here and do exactly what I'm doing now the panel liner this is kind of more of an afterthought really liking the way this was looking. I am kind of being liberal again. We're going to come in and clean it up. Not too worried about it. to dry for a minute and then we'll start cleaning it up the teeth I based with Iraqi sand and I'm probably gonna come back with another good kind of tan off-white color maybe some of this stuff some elfic flesh and then the very tips might actually end up getting some ivory which will probably be another model color Here we go. This is the cleaner I have. Enamel thinner. This will work good. So much of it I can just kind of daub up here. Too much saturation there. All right, worked out okay though. I don't know that I'm really going to waste too much time trying to clean it up. Point being that I think it's it's actually okay. There's just one rune here that might not be taking it because I think it's just really shallow. time I do this, it might just be sucking it right up out of there. <clears throat> Again, I don't want to spend too much time on this, because I don't really want it popping out too much. I want something that if somebody looks down there, it looks kind of neat, but mostly I want them focusing on the miniature up here. I think we're going to call it good. Some of that's not sticking because it's not as deep as other parts of it. I'll 
clean it up just a little bit. And to do that, I've got one wet end of the Q-tip that has the cleaner on it. I'm going to dry in to help mop up a little bit. I'm pretty sure I jumped in there a little too soon. I should have actually given that panel liner a little longer to dry. But we're going to leave it set like that and then we'll come back and uh, maybe mess with it later. <clears throat> I'm going to leave the claws on the end of the fingers for the wings that brown that kind of match this part of his horns coming off his head. I've been going back and forth on his eyes, whether I want to leave him like that or actually do some kind of red glowy effect. I don't know. It almost seems a little cliche, really. But sometimes cliche is not bad. It's just cliche. <laughs> Alright. I think we'll work on those teeth a little bit. So again, just to go over, um, if you use the panel liner, it's actually a really cool way to color in some crevices. You can always just throw on a wash also, I like playing around with the panel liner. It does work when your crevices are a little more consistent, but say crevices, you know, your little indentions, your grooves. I do use a wet palette, mainly just because uh, if I don't, the paints always seem to dry out on the palette really fast, so I don't necessarily use the wet palette to try to preserve the paints overnight. I use it mainly just so the paints don't dry out on me while I'm using them. And I have learned over the years too, it makes it a lot easier when you're just trying to thin out your paints. Get them to a nice consistency. And here I'm trying not to go all the way down to the base of the tooth. That way there will be some color variation. The tooth kind of gets wider as it gets closer to the tip. thought about putting some blood effects on there because I've got that blood of the blood god from Citadel. But if you're going to do a blood effect, this stuff is awesome. But, I don't know. Every time I do it, I almost kind of regret doing it after I do it. So I've just gotten to where I don't do it a whole lot. So I don't know. Just looks a little too over the top maybe. I don't know.
Yeah, I think I'm going to throw some more panel liner on that, and then this time I'm just going to set this guy off to the side and leave him alone, let it dry before I come back and try to clean it up. Hope they got on there good. Might not have been centered real well. Set this guy off to the side. Get that panel liner dry. The winged beast. Now I feel like I'm too far back here. I don't know. Here. There we go. I think this is a good spot. Okay, so that enamel's pretty much set up. Still got kind of a glossy look, but I'm pretty sure it's dry it's not coming off so let's change all that bag of q-tips kind of handy to have at your painting station just uh, read the ones we have in the bathroom cabinet enamel thinner work good to clean this up Use in a well ventilated area because these fumes are no joke. Here where it was real shallow, and I just kind of slopped it on. And it cleans up really well. I'm not fighting it near as much as I was earlier when it was still wet, when I hadn't given enough time to dry. Oh yeah, that's the way this cleans up. And the only thing that cleans up any easier really is usually oil paints. And I've only played with them a very little bit. Speaking of which, I have these from um, MIG Ammo or Ammo MIG. They're really great, but they are oil. Did I get those on camera there? These right here, they're awesome. I just don't come into a lot of opportunities where I find myself using them. There's, what I use those for is for griming up like the bottom of cloaks and boots on some miniatures. I think well, that's it. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it. I'm not going to worry about trying to grime it up anymore. Or do anything with it. Now I touch up around the uh, whip here where I overpainted when I was painting the teeth. It's no big deal. No big deal. Hmm. We'll give it a touch of ivory. Ooh. 
model color ivory to be more specific. This is one of my favorite colors, one of my favorite paints. Though I've gotten to where I don't use it as much, but once upon a time, it was heavily used. Which brush am I going to use for this? We're going to use the small one. The Da Vinci shout out to Josh from Mini Painting Studio for turning me on to these. If you want to see a real pro in action, uh, go check that guy out. He's a pro painter, I'm not. I'm just an amateur trying to pay for his hobby and have some fun. Um, and I actually do some pretty decent commissions. I've got some out there and you can see some of the YouTube videos uh, in my back catalog. Um, yeah. Here we go. Get some water. Get some paint. Mix them together a little bit. See where I'm at on my consistency. Not too bad. Alright. Are we on camera? Do you know where we're at? Do we know what we're doing? Not all the time, but we get through life anyway. And we have fun doing it. So, of course, as I'm coming in and doing this, I'm not going as far down as I did with the Elfic Flesh, which was this other off-white. I don't know what I did with it. Here it is. This was the other color that I used. Uh, you know, the base was Iraqi Sand. Then I used this uh, Elfic Flesh from Game Color. All these are actually Vallejo paints. And then, of course, the Model Color Ivory is what we, we have right now. And again, we're just not going as far down on the tooth. Really just want the whites. The parts that are constantly coming in contact. and would be the cleanest because the tartar would be the most worn off on that part of the tooth I guess or would have the least chance to build up and you know you probably make the argument that the tooth on the whip might behave a little differently but I don't care I'm doing it this way because this is the way I paint all the teethers, toothers, teeth, toothers, toothuses. fangs, ivory. Actually, I take a different approach to tusks. Actually, no. Thinking about some of the tusks I've painted on, no, I pretty much do the same technique on them too. I got that going on and some of those coats of paint are actually pretty thin and you can actually still see some of the gray underneath it so I may revisit those teeth on the whip and put a second coat on them right now I'm actually going to throw down some more of this um, black gray model color and just kind of touch up some of the areas where I overpainted doing those teeth And to lighten this, I added another gray to it. I don't have another gray out there, but I can probably get away with mixing it with some of that ivory that's out there. I just have to be really careful. Definitely need some water because model color paint is some thick stuff if you've never used it. It's probably some of the thickest paint I own, but it thins well. It thins well and it just uh, works. Definitely one of my favorites. It's one that I keep coming back to. I have some other uh, Vallejo products. I have um, a bunch of Game Air paints. 
and a few model air paints, and then a bunch of the um, model colors are the ones that I, I keep going back to. They're the ones that are thicker. Supposedly the game color, I guess they're kind of just as thick, but they're supposed to be more opaque or something like that. And basically the range of them, if you're unfamiliar with them, the, the game color line, you just have more vibrant colors than what you typically find in the model color line. Because they're aimed more at fantasy painters. And the uh, model color ones, which are, are really thick and, and are some of the kind of darker, more muted colors. I just keep finding myself coming back to them. Got the touch-ups done. Now let me try to mix it in and get the color a little more appropriate. We're going to cheat and just use the color code on the box there. This is the next one down. Or is it? Slimer green. Give that a shot. And then eventually we're going to go even darker, so I'm not actually stopping here. If I can get this to work right what I'm trying to do. Um, let me see. I want to thin that down some. Some edge to touch. Airbrush thinner. Water probably would have done the trick, but. Let's sit this guy over here where I'm going to knock him down again. Off camera there, I knocked over that winged beast. And as I mentioned in the last video, last time I got knocked over, something broke, so I don't want to keep doing that. Well, it's not really dark like I want it to be. Let me see what else I can do here. And then a little darkness. We're just mixing in a little um, rift green with that previous green, which was Slimer Green from Scale Color. Let's try to make the cooler parts of the magical smoke look darker. Is that even on camera? That's why I need <laughs> I need a camera that I can hook up through my PC so I can actually see the monitor in front of me and get a better look. But I'm working on it, guys. Think 
thank you for bearing with me here. Let's venture into this. Come back and daub some of that up because right there it kind of ran on me a little bit. And what's nice about having them thinned out so much is uh, cleanup's kind of easy when stuff like that happens. I could just dry brush it and be lazy, but uh, I don't know. Dry brushing has its place. I think for the level I'm trying to achieve here, I don't know that I'm going to get there by dry brushing. Again, I'm not necessarily painting to win any competition here. I'm just trying to push my own boundaries, what I can do. Try to create a good looking miniature for the table, but not one that I'm going to lament if something happens to it. Well, I might lament a little bit, but you know, not a whole lot. Let me see if I can get a little more here where I'm a little more center of the camera. thinner brush try to get these ribs Brush is way too wet. I'm trying to bust out with a wet brush, but the paint keeps running down into the recesses where I want it to glow more. So there we go. Got that rib done. Got that rib done. That rib. That rib. Okay, I kind of like that. We're going to stop right there. I might come back and work on it some more later, but I got it where I want it. So I don't know how you folks are handling quarantine for myself, my job uh, is kind of essential, so I still leave the house pretty regularly. I know my wife has expressed that uh, any excuse she has to get out of the house and go for a drive, she takes it just because she's been working from home and you know how it is, you get a little cooped up now and then. 
once or twice a week, I drag the boys out of the house, walk the dogs. Yesterday they did pretty good on their own, going outside and horsing around. And we live across the street from a city park, but it's closed. And while we adhere to that, because we do think it is the safer bet, there are some people who don't, and it still gets a fair amount of traffic through it. So, how's that look on camera? They got that little skull. Help it pop a little more by making it a little darker. Shout out to uh, everybody watching my video. Ah. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. This thing has a lot of these little skulls in there. And they seem to be the ones that are protruding more. I obviously want to darken, help them. Look like they're in the kind of the cooler spectrum with the magical fire going on here. Well, if you guys like what you're doing here, or like what you're doing here, if you like what you see here, um, or if you just like listening to somebody ramble, I know I kind of feel that way about some of the pod, pod yeah, the podcasts and YouTube videos that I watch, um, feel free to give me a like and a subscribe. Some of that I don't want to darken because I want there to be some depth to it. Well. Dare I, dare I, dare I, dare I mess with these ribs right here, you bet. It's not like uh, if I mess up, somebody's going to fire me. They're just going to either <laughs> give me a thumb down on the video or just never watch another one. Yeah, it worked alright. Very small area to paint. Trying to get a little bit more of a transition here, so I want to <clears throat> send that part of my paint out a little bit. Get kind of a smoother transition to the end of that dark or that cooler part of the. Magical cloud. 
chick on the Minotaur. Not Minotaur. Why did I call this guy a Minotaur? I don't know. He's a winged beast. That was actually what I named, I think, the first video. It was just winged beast. So I didn't know what else to call him. Well, my plans are just to try to upload this video straight, but depending on the audio quality and how I feel about it, we'll see. So I'm not as talkative as I originally meant to be, and I don't mind sharing that with you guys. I don't even mind uploading it under those circumstances, because um, making videos and trying to share techniques... Um, it's kind of challenging. It's got a lot of challenges, actually. Is he okay? So, again, I'm just coming in under here where some of the cooler bits are I'm darkening them up a little bit I want some transitions and I've already really got a good mid-tone as far as brightness goes I've already got kind of a good mid-bright and then the inner what would be kind of the hotter part of the magical flame is brighter So like on this little piece here, I'm kind of doing all that color. Then I might come back in on this little high part right here and just make it a little darker. of what's going on. Go ahead and feel free to drop a line in the comments and let me know what projects you have going on. Get some dialogue going. Let me know how you're handling the quarantine situation and if you've been able to maybe use some extra time towards painting or whatever other hobbies you got going on. Now I'm going to kind of try to get a better transition going here. Some of this I just need to let it dry. And come back and scope it out. There's not a real good transition there. Maybe I'm too mumbly. I don't know. We have to listen to the audio. I don't know. Maybe this video never sees the light of day. It's definitely a departure from the way I was doing videos. Where... I pretty much already kind of knew what I'd done. I was able to just kind of sit down and walk everybody through the process. 
this is more kind of just jumping in feet first and seeing what happens. Um, and I'd already kind of called it quits on this, but just the more I looked at it, the more I was like, yeah, that needs more depth. So, that's what we're doing. Giving it a little bit more depth. I'm calling it depth, and maybe contrast would be a better word. Because you have the bright hot going up to the cooler dark. The way flames actually work in real life. I'm going to come in and probably touch him up right there a little bit. I think I will do that. I'm pretty sure he used Brain's Pink on there, but that's not looking like Brain's Pink. I think maybe Brain's Pink was just a highlight. Brain's Pink being a Reaper color. There we go. Work. Hmm. Well, let's set him aside for a minute. Well, I'm going to be working on him. Um, I think what I'm going to try to do is put out two of these videos. Oh, let's back up. You don't want to look up my nose. I don't want to look at my nose. I don't know. I don't know why you would. I don't think you would. Yeah, I'm going to try to put out two videos a week. I think. More along this style. A little less like what I was doing before. And, um... Yeah. Did you see where we go from there? So, until next time, bark on, puppies. <laughs>